Place you've always been, and you're going round in circles in the world you're living in. And when the tyranny of times, the only truth you've ever known, well then it's time to find a dream to call you own. When the road you're on is rising. Your possibility, you can see a new horizon of where you want to be. Well, tomorrow is the promise that belongs to every day. Your life can change forever when your dream leads the way. Well, it's the calling of your life, it's finding your direction. You gotta make a new connection You gotta find a place to start Experience the glory Of living your own story It's the calling of your life It's a journey of the heart
What would you do right now if you knew you could use your compass to get past any failure? Your compass is your inner sense of direction. It's the road that's guiding you to the fulfillment of your wildest dreams. Your compass is the inner voice and inner vision and intuition and inspirations that are guiding you, prompting you, refining you to your magnificence. It's what allows you to tap into that part of you that you know can do more and be more and give more in the world. Everything that we are seeking outside of us is already inside of us. And all of the answers to every question that we have in life, we have if we go deep within. The greatest journey you can ever take is the journey of self-discovery. All right, everyone, everyone, come on, listen, welcome, welcome to this event, okay, this WonderCon event, this one, Decisions, Decisions That Shape Destiny, listen, it, it is power packed tonight, do you know why, I'm pretty, I'm kind of biased, because it's girl power night, okay, it is girl power night, I am your host, Grace Sandals, the hostess with the mostest, okay, uh, glad to see every one of y'all. Uh, let's get this thing cracking. Let's get it popping. Whatever your word choice is, let's get it. Okay, we're going to have fun today, this evening. Um, just excited for these powerful, powerful women who are speaking on this evening. Now, normally I get to it and get out of the way, but because I'm hosting, I know everything is entertainment. Okay, somebody taught me that. This is a gentleman with an ATS in his name. He taught me that. But Glad to have y'all on. I am so excited for this this event, Power Pack. They these these three women that are coming. You buckle your seatbelt and get ready. So, without further ado, let me let me bring the first one up, okay? But before I do that, what we were just watching, deep, okay? The owner Brown said the greatest journey we could ever take is the journey of self discovery. Facts. OK, <laughs> facts. We may not want to do it because it's going to hurt, but it is it may hurt, but it's going to be well worth it. So make sure you absolutely, absolutely take that, that journey of self-discovery. Know who you are. Find out who you are so that you can get everything that you want and deserve out of your life. Now, without further ado, let me introduce the first young lady coming up here. Uh, Deanna Marie pioneer of the always becoming holistic philosophy, certified herbalist and wellness advocate with a blend of cognitive behavioral therapy, spirituality, and herbal expertise. Deanna has influenced global holistic health. An entrepreneur with multi-million dollar ventures, she's also a dedicated writer and mother. Her work emphasizes the power of emotions and thought in shaping reality. Dive deep into always becoming with Deanna, guiding your holistic journey. Now, here she is tonight with her message, embracing self-kindness, the empowering decision to break the chains of self-criticism. Once upon a time in a small town nestled between rolling hills and babbling brooks, lived a girl named Tamara. She was like any other 14 year old navigating the maze of adolescence, school and friendships. But Tamara, excuse me, but Tamara was about to embark on a journey that would change her life in ways she couldn't imagine. In the beginning, Tamara often found herself caught in a storm of self doubt and criticism. She would look in the mirror and focus on every flow, every imperfection. Little did she know that these moments were the starting line for something incredible. One day, as she caught herself in the act of being overly self-critical, a light bulb flickered in her mind. It was the first step, the green light to a path of personal growth. See, Tamara realized that awareness was the key. She began to notice those moments when she was too hard on herself. And with that awareness, a door opened to intentional change. 
With newfound awareness, Tamara made a bold decision to, ch to challenge the negative self-talk that echoed in her mind like a never-ending storm. It was her moment to take a charge like a boss, to don a superhero cape and declare, I call the shots here. This decision wasn't just about being in control. It was a mind glow up a refreshing reboot to her mindset. Tamara started trading her old negative beliefs for a shiny new perspective. It was as if she had discovered a secret power within herself. She began shaping her thoughts and emotions into a positive vibe, a force that propelled her forward. The world suddenly looked different through her newly optimistic lens. As Tamara continued on her journey, she realized that emotional well-being wasn't just a personal victory. It was a choice that built mental toughness. It was like going, it was like doing mental push-ups, strengthening her mind and shedding the old habits that held her back. She was creating a foundation for long-term mental health gains. The ripple effect of Tamara's journey extended beyond herself. Prioritizing emotional well-being was like creating a wave of positivity in her life. It wasn't just about feeling good. It was about the vibes she sent out affecting everything around her. Her relationships smoothed out. School became less of a hassle and her whole life felt more satisfying. Embracing self-kindness, the empowering decision to break the chains of self-criticism. See, this evening I want to talk to you. I want to I want to talk to you about the self-criticism thing that we're doing because it's a decision. And the smallest decision has a ripple effect on every aspect of your life. That small decision to eat that hamburger over and over again has a ripple effect to every aspect of your life. That smallest decision to not like what you're wearing that day has a ripple effect on every aspect of your life. That's the smallest decision not to smile has a ripple effect on every aspect of your life. But I'm here to tell you that awareness is the first step. What you can account for, you can control. Let me repeat that for you. What you can account for, you can control. What does this look like, Deanna? Well, if I can account for the fact that I don't like how I look in a certain outfit, I can control how I look in that outfit. What does this look like? I can decide to either work out and fit in that outfit or I can decide to go buy a bigger size in that outfit. But it's a decision, a small decision. But awareness is the first step. What you can account for, you can control. If I can account for the fact that I don't like to look at myself in the mirror, I can control it. And I can make the decision to look at myself in the mirror every day and say, I love you. The next thing you have to do is you have to make the decision to challenge your negative self-talk. I don't like how I look today. Why? You know you can't do it. Why? You're not good enough. Why? He'll never want you. Why? She'll never be your friend. Why? You'll never be smart enough. Why? You'll never be good enough. Why? And then the next thing you learn to do is you learn how to stay aligned with your emotional well-being because Imagination plus emotion equals creation. If you can imagine it, put your emotions into it and then create it. 
But if you pay attention to how you feel and you can have the emotional well-being to say, hey, no, I don't like how that feels. We're not doing that anymore. Once you take control of your emotions, once you have emotional priority of yourself, you can do anything. So let's start off with awareness. Have you ever noticed those moments when you catch yourself being overly self-critical? Y'all know these moments. These moments where you look at yourself in the mirror, you be like, "You, oh, girl, you look good. To, wait a minute. Man. I don't like how that roll just kind of don't, it don't roll right in this dress. So I'm going to take this dress off and I'm going to go try on another one. And then you try on another dress and you be like, this one don't fit either. See, you just fat. If you would have just da 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 then we wouldn't be looking like this. We'd be able to fit in the clothes. Y'all know the cycle. You know. Or you're at work and you make the smallest mistake on something and it gets pointed out. And when it gets pointed out, you... You just, oh my goodness, I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. Man, why did you make this mistake? Dummy. But in all actuality, they're just saying, hey, you 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 just missed this one spot right here. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Just want to let you know. You know, it, it doesn't mess up anything. But in your head, you're like, I screwed up the entire thing. It's all my fault. That 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 overly self-critical moments. Well, that awareness is like the kickoff of your personal growth journey because what you do is you say, hey, I'm recognizing that I'm really too hard on myself. It was just a mistake. Yes, that roll ain't rolling right in that dress, but I still look beautiful regardless. So let's start this journey to actually feeling and looking how we desire to. See, once you see those self-critical thoughts, once you can pinpoint how you are overly critical of yourself, how you're, the, you're harder on yourself, then everyone else is on you, that type of thing. Like you are your worst critic. You're your own worst critic, stuff like that. Well, when you can start pinpointing and saying, wait a minute. Once you see those self-critical thoughts, you've got the green light to change and grow intentionally. I want to repeat that word, intentionally. Because now you're making the decision to say, no longer will I feel this way. No longer will I be overly critical of who I am because I deserve better. When you can account for it, you can control it. And it's not just about knowing you're hard on yourself. It's about getting why you're hard on yourself. Why do I feel like if I make the smallest mistake, the world is about to come down crashing? Why do I feel like I'm too fat for this dress or I can't look right in that outfit? Why do I feel like I don't deserve the love that I require and desire? Why do I? Why, why, why? It's not just about knowing. It's about getting down to the why. Developing this self-awareness is like leveling up your emotional intelligence game. You talking about your bounce back game is hard. How about that emotional intelligence game being hard? Because you don't have to worry about bouncing back if your emotions are on point. See, suddenly you're not just reacting to feelings. You're understanding where they come from. You're doing the deep down digging. You're doing the shadow work. You're asking the questions. Who made 
me responsible for this. Who? I'm not good enough to get into school. Who made you responsible for that? Who told you you was not good enough? Who told you you were not smart enough? Who told you you were too old? Who told you you were too young? Who told you you were ugly? Who told you you was too cute? Who told you who told you? When you start understanding where they come from, you're accounting for it and now you can control it. And this upgrade helps you handle emotions better and makes your relationships smoother, giving you a solid, resilient mindset. Partner, let me upgrade your autumn. I'm sorry, y'all. I couldn't help it. It was playing in my head, but y'all get what I'm saying. When you have self-awareness, it's the greatest upgrade in life you could possibly have. Because then you can start that journey intentionally to upgrading every aspect of you. When I say your relationships are smoother, <clears throat> it's because you now understand, wait a minute, you just triggered me but it's not you it's the energy and something you did that i perceived as you attacked me because up here comes that where did this come from because when i was this age or when i was with this person or when i was at this place this happened and it and you're making me feel like that again but i understand it's not you it's me. And now that I can account for it, I can control that. So the next time it comes up, shh, I got my superhero cape on and you can't touch me. See, that's the kind of bounce back you want. You want to be able to bounce back from a trigger without destroying the people around you. You want to be able to bounce back from a heartbreak understanding that you are still lovable the next thing that i want you to understand in your decision making is now you can make the decision to challenge that negative self-talk see now you can take charge like a boss you can choose to kick the negative self-talk to the curb because it isn't just about being in control. It's like putting the superhero cape on. It's your way of saying, I call the shots here. Let me repeat that for you. It's like putting on your superhero cape and it's your way of saying, I call the shots here. This decision is your power move. Don't worry about making the power moves outside of you because once you make the power move inside of you, nothing can stop you. Giving you the control to shape your thoughts and emotions into a more positive vibe. You can walk by the mirror, put on your cape, say, I call the shots here, look in your mirror and say, damn, I look good today and keep on walking. It's that mind glow up that you keep hearing everybody talking about. It's that refresher in your brain. It's like, oh, light bulb, huh, I'm the girl, yes. Challenging those self-critical thoughts is your shortcut to that mind glow up. Because when that thought pops in your head and you're able to say, wait a minute, hold on, let's talk about this. Why do I feel like I don't deserve love? Huh, well, let's think about it. Let's break this down. Well, when I was this years old, I remember all of this happening and all of this stuff was going on and I felt, I 
feel like nobody cared about me. Like they just left me out. Like nobody paid attention to me. I, I, I didn't feel like they loved me. And then I started telling myself, well, it's your fault. Maybe you're not cute enough or maybe you're not pretty enough. Maybe you're not athletic or smart or intelligent enough. And when you're able to challenge these questions, it's like trading in your old negative beliefs for a shiny new perspective that's all about positivity and believing in what you are capable of. It's time to rock that optimistic outlook. The next thing is staying aligned with the emotional well-being. See, you, you've you done all the work, you work through it, you, you're, you're trading the, the negative for the positive, you are replacing the holes that's in you from the negativity with the love and the fulfillment of the positivity within your life. It's time to, it's time to stay aligned with that, building that mental toughness. See, ever, ever thought about treating your mind like, a, okay, for those of you who work out, for those of you who have watched workouts, for those of you who have started and stopped, just work with me here, okay? No judgment. Ever thought about treating your mind like a workout? See, choosing emotional well-being is like doing mental push-ups or some mental squats. No. It's about getting tougher and more resilient. See, when you first start working out, it's painful because your body's not used to it. How many How many of y'all have done that first workout? You was like, oh, it was a good workout. And then like the next day, it hurt to sit on the toilet because every muscle hurt. And then the next day after that, it, it hurt to just roll over so you can get out of bed because every muscle seems to have tightened up even more than it did the day before. And then by the third day, you like, I'm not doing this no more. And then that fourth day, you start feeling some ease and you like, but I like how I feel. Let me go do it again. Because now that I know what it's going to feel like and I understand what this pain is going to be like, I'm still going to do it because I know what I'm going towards. That's what choosing emotional well-being is like. It's about getting tougher and more resilient. It's about ditching the habits that drag you down. It's about ditching the habit of eating two hamburgers instead of one, or probably ditching the habit of eating a hamburger altogether. Now, look, y'all, I like my hamburgers. I'm not, I'm just, just roll with me, okay? Just roll with me. It's about eating a small sliver of cheesecake instead of a quarter piece of cheesecake. It's about waking up in the morning to meditate or pray instead of sleeping until 15 minutes before you have to actually be out the house. Hmm. See, the decision sets you up for long term mental term, excuse me, mental health gains. It's helping you face whatever life throws at you with adaptability and strength. See, when you're working out, your body gets to a point where you get used to the workouts. You start craving the workouts. You start desiring the workouts. Well, it's the same thing. You start desiring the positivity. You start desiring the health. You start desiring the love, and you just want to keep moving towards that. So when you get hit with somebody saying, you dummy, you look at them and be like, uh, uh, that's what you think. I only look like this. Don't get it twisted. I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> I couldn't help it. And the next thing you start doing is you start spreading the good pop. See, when you work on the inside of you it moves to the outside of you it oozes out of you see think of prioritizing emotional well-being as creating a wave of positivity in your life when you start feeling good about yourself you're like hey today's my birthday no it ain't yes it is no it ain't 
Yes, it is. Because how do you feel on your birthday? Good vibes only. No negative vibes. Today's my birthday. Ain't nothing you can say that's going to make me feel bad today because it's my birthday. And for those of y'all who celebrate your birthday for the whole week, holla at you. For those of y'all who have a whole month of celebration, how about you make it a whole year? Make every day your birthday because it's not just about feeling good. It's about the vibes you send out affecting everything around you, your relationships, work, your whole life, your family. Everything just seems to go a lot smoother and your whole life just feels like the weight of the world has just been lifted off of you and you can do anything and everything. You can climb a mountain. You can jump out of a plane. You can ride a horse. You can pet a snake. I'm saying these things because some people are too afraid to do any of these things. But when you have the good vibes flowing through you, anything is possible. It's it's like it's like building a foundation for a kick-ass, balanced life. I mean, think about it. You wake up in the morning, you get your meditation and your prayer on, you clear your mind, you get your day ready, and then you sit down and you list everything that you're grateful for. Then you sit down and you compliment yourself every morning. Jennifer Lewis said it best, and I, I don't remember what she said, but she said when she looked, she said, you look yourself in the morning, you, you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning, you say, damn, I look good. Because I do. And you walk out with that confidence every single day, and then you get in your car, all no lights on, gas tank full, air, uh, the, ti air is ti the tires are aired up. <laughs> You get in your car, you start it, it crank up smooth, purring like a kitten. You back out of the car, you get to school, there's you driving to work, there's no traffic. You driving to school, there's no traffic. You find the perfect parking spot so you don't have to walk all the way from Timbuktu in your cute heels that you just bought the other day. You've been breaking them in all weekend so that way you can be cute on Monday or you don't feel like walking from the south side of the campus to the north side of the campus so you finally get that good spot on the north side of the campus. And you go in, you got good grades, projects going well. That's what you talk. That's what you, that's a kick-ass balanced life. Then you come home to some good love that I'm just saying. Make the intentional decision to break the chains of self-criticism. As Tamara stood on the other side of her transformative journey, she looked back at the girl she used to be. The awareness that kick-started her personal growth the decision to challenge negative self-talk and staying aligned with emotional well-being had turned her life into a story of resilience and strength. Now, Tamara didn't just face the challenges of life. She embraced them with adaptability and a newfound mental toughness. She had become a, a beacon of positivity, spreading good vibes, and creating a kick-ass balanced life. And so, in the small town, between rolling hills and babbling brooks, Tamara's story became a tale of empowerment and growth. A story she continued to write with every positive thought and resilient step forward. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this. The smallest decision has a profound ripple effect on every aspect of your life. See, today, 
we've explored the transformative power of awareness as the first step in your personal growth journey. By understanding that what you can account for, you can control, you're equipped to navigate the intricate landscape of your emotions, kickstarting a journey towards intentional change and resilience. I want to say this again, intentional change and resilience. We've delved into the decision to challenge negative self-talk. Discovering that it's not just about taking charge, it's about donning a superhero cape, shaping your thoughts into a positive vibe, and undergoing a mind glow up that refreshes your perspective and fuels an optimistic outlook on what you're truly capable of achieving. And lastly, we've explored staying aligned with mental, with emotional well-being, treating your mind like a workout to build mental toughness and resilience. Choosing emotional well-being, or what I like to say, choosing to prioritize your emotions isn't just a personal game. It's a gift you give to those around you creating a wave of positivity that smoothens relationships, it eases professional endeavors, and it builds a foundation for a kick-ass balanced life. Now, in the journey ahead, embrace these principles. For each decision you make echoes beyond the present moment. Each decision you make echoes beyond the present moment, shaping the narrative of your life. So as you build and cultivate your awareness, as you challenge this, these negative thoughts that you have, and as you prioritize emotional well-being, you're not just transforming yourself. You are creating a beautiful and magnificent ripple effect that touches every facet of your existence. Let me repeat that. You are creating a ripple effect that touches every facet of your existence. So go forth with intention. For your smallest decisions have the power to reshape your world. May your imagination always be a celebration of you. How to get here? What were the steps? When you make a pathway, a plan, that then when you get back to now, you have a, a pathway laid out for you that you can take one step at a time to make that journey manageable. Well, you might be sitting there thinking, well, I don't know if I'm ready to take that first step on my journey. I don't know if I'm ready to begin this adventure. And if that's where you're at, well, you might be in for a rude awakening because you're already on your journey. You see, inaction is still an action. It's just not the type of action that serves you. If you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? This moment is precious. Take advantage of it and go after your dreams. You may get a little scared. You may even have doubts and fears, but guess what? At least you'll be feeling like you're living and you're going after your dreams, and that is what life is all about. The next step is there. It knocks at your inner door. It's what I call the intuitive nudge that's asking you to take inspired action. It's waiting for you. It's probably tickling your soul right now as you watch this. So how do you know what the next step is? You turn within, you pay attention to yourself, and you follow your own inner guidance. All right. I tried to tell y'all, okay? I tried to tell y'all. 
uh, that we got some powerhouses today, okay? You heard the first powerhouse. You heard what she said. I, I don't go back and re-preach good sermons, okay? But y'all heard her, okay? <laughs> what I will say is uh, the gentleman said, inaction is an action. It's just an action that doesn't serve you. It, just go put that in your, in your memory bank, okay? But you heard the first powerhouse, Miss Deanna Marie, okay? Very awesome, Dion. Very awesome. I'm about to get out of the way and introduce this second powerhouse that we got coming up. Okay. Tracy D. Armstrong, author, educator, entrepreneur, and motivator, has a true passion for transforming lives by transforming minds. Her experiences in life have helped to fuel the desire to see others' lives change for the better, encouraging them to live the productive, prosperous, and purposeful life they were created to live. And this is her message tonight, titled The Three Pivotal Ps to Destiny Decision Making. Tracy, you got it. The Three Pivotal Ps to Destiny Decision Making. Your destiny is determined by the decisions that you decide on a daily basis. Or is it? Or is it that your destiny is already in existence and you just have to decide whether to relax and flow into it or resist and fight through it? So which would you prefer? Do you want to flow into your destiny or do you want to have to fight to get to your destiny? I think most people would say that they want to flow into their destiny, but most haven't fully comprehended how to flow and not fight. Many of us, I know for me, we've been taught that we have to fight all of our lives in order to get the things that we want. And many times we have never been taught how to flow. I know in my life and in my experiences, I can remember my mother teaching me that as a young black woman, I had to fight to be accepted in this world. And I had to fight because everything was a competition. And she taught me that life would be hard and that anything worth having was worth fighting for. So this prepared my mindset to believe that life was going to be so hard and that fighting was the only way to make it in the world. Now, many of you may have had some of those same lessons taught to you as you were growing up, but this is what I realized. I realized, you know what? It's not that she was wrong. She taught me based on her experiences and based on what she knew in life. However, when you learn new lessons, you have new experiences, these experiences can lead you to a totally different pathway than what others have ever taught you or what others ever could believe. Think about it. If she only had it hard, what's she going to teach me? It's going to be hard. If she's never experienced how to flow, how can she show me how to flow? But when you know, they always say, when you know better, you do better. So here we go. Can you truly flow through life towards your destiny? This is not to say that you won't have any obstacles. And I'm not saying that everything is just going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? But what I am saying is when those obstacles that come your way and that negative energy comes and tries to overtake you, how you respond in all of your decisions will determine how you flow. This is where the destiny decision-making really takes hold. The three pivotal P's that will help you decide whether or not to flow, when to flow, and 
how to flow. Now, let me ask you a few questions. Everybody get your thinking caps on, okay? I am an educator, so I like to ask questions. That's just what I do. So, have you ever had an event that you were trying to get to and it's in a different location or it's like a different, you know, destination? You got to maybe drive to get there or even you got to even decide whether or not you even want to go. I know as we get older, as I get older, uh, sometimes I sit back and I'm like, do I really want to go? You know, I got invited, but mm, and you ask yourself, how do you determine if you're going to go or not? Do you ask yourself, what am I going to get out of this? Should I go or not? How much is this going to cost me? Is the cost and the investment worth my time and my energy and getting up and getting dressed and doing all the stuff for me. So think about it. When you're deciding to go somewhere, you say, okay, I'm going to go. Now ask yourself the question, how am I going to get there? Which way am I going to go? Which road am I going to take? You know, all of these thoughts, all of these questions come into play just for deciding on to go somewhere, to go to an event that may be just some random event. Do you ask yourself those same questions when it comes to your destiny, your future, your dreams, and your goals? Because is it worth the investment? Is it worth the time? Is it worth getting up every day and doing what you need to do in order to achieve those dreams, the goals, and the visions that have been placed in your life. Now, when I decide on making a decision, when I decide on whether or not I'm going to flow into this direction that I'm going, the first pivotal P is, is this productive for me? Is what I'm doing productive for my life? Is it productive for my destiny? And is it productive for my overall goal and future? That's a good question. Because if what I'm doing is not productive for my life, why am I doing it? I'm going to pause and let you think about that right there. Because if what you are doing is not productive for your life, why do you continue to do it? If the emotions that you are having and they continue to come up, if those emotions are not productive for your life, why are you allowing those emotions to remain in the way of you getting to your destiny? If the energy that you are putting out is not productive to your flow, towards your destiny, then I think you might want to adjust the energy that you're putting out because if that energy is not productive, where is it getting you? I'm just saying. The second pivotal P is how does this decision to flow in this direction affect my prosperity? Now, I want to make sure we're clear. Prosperity is not just about money. It's about money, but it's also about how you flourish in life, how you live your life. If your life is not flourishing, what decisions are you making? If your life is not flourishing, how are you flowing? What are you flowing into? What are you doing that's causing your prosperity to not be there? Because prosperity is a part of your destiny and you can flow into it. But what are you doing that's causing it to not flow back to you? The third pivotal P in my decision making to flow in a decision is, does it align with my purpose? My purpose in life will guide me, lead me, turn me around, keep me, 
And I say that because your purpose should also. Your purpose in life is set to keep you on track, flowing towards your destiny, flowing towards the things that you were called to do, the things that you were created to do. You have a purpose in life and you should live a life in purpose and on purpose. So if what you're doing and the decisions that you're making, if they are not in alignment with the purpose that you know that you have in your life, why are you still doing it? Because let me tell you, your purpose will remind you of why you are doing things and why you should not be doing certain things. Think about it. If I have a purpose, which my purpose is to have a positive impact on the lives of others, then the question is, if that's my purpose, then I should not be going around trying to have a negative impact on the lives of others. Because if I am being negative, then I am not walking in the purpose. So it checks you. Your purpose will check you. It's like a gut check. When you know that you're not doing what you're supposed to do, and then your purpose tap you on the shoulder and say, um, that ain't what you're supposed to be doing. Why are you doing it? Because guess what? When you're not work, walking in your purpose, it's going to cause you to get out of your flow. Think about it. I'm just saying. Now, when you use these pivotal P's to determine your decisions, then you will flow better towards your destiny in life. I was watching, and this is just ironic that it came on this morning. I was watching TD Jakes, my TD Jakes fans out there. And the topic was the bumpy road to better. He was talking about getting on the road and moving from one place to another, but how sometimes the road may be bumpy when you're on the road to better. He broke down how some people stay in a comfortable situation, how some people never aspire to better because the road may be bumpy. But once you get past the bumpy road, then life can be better and your situations can flow in a better place thought about it. I said, you know what? That is so true. Many people make the decision to not move into a better place or a better situation because of the thought of a bumpy road, because of the thought of not just flowing into it. But this is what I realized. How do you decide when to move? How do you decide when to take those steps to move to a different destination. What questions do you ask yourself when you're trying to make the decision of whether or not to move? Because if you don't decide to move and to do things differently, then you will stay in this comfortable position. And comfort, hey, there's nothing wrong with comfort. People like comfort, right? But if I know that I'm comfortable now, but if I go through this, road to the next destination, I'm going to get to something else that may be better and may bring me more comfort. So why stay stuck in this level when I can be at this level? So the questions I want you to ask yourself, how do you determine when to move? When do you make the decisions to move? What are your steps, what are your processes when you're deciding on your destiny decision-making? How do you know when to flow? So if you never really had a structure of how to flow and when to flow, I will say the three pivotal P's in my decision-making that have helped guide my emotions and guide my experiences have been asking myself, how does flowing affect the productivity in my life? I ask myself 
and you should ask yourself, how does flowing affect the prosperity in my life? And you should ask yourself, how does flowing affect the purpose that has been placed on your life? Because this is what I do. Any decision that comes up, any opportunity that comes my way, what I used to do is I used to think, okay, I have to fight to get it. I have to fight to make it happen. I have to fight. I have to fight. Now, my mindset has been transformed to understand that it's not about the fight. It's about the decision to let it flow. And I was reminded last night to relax my mind. Receive the destiny, like receive it and know that it is mine, that it is here, that I can have it, that I will have it. I have to resist the negativity that is going to try to flow my way because that's the universe. It's cause and effect. If I'm, I'm pushing this way, something's going to push back against me. But I have to resist that negativity that is going to try to block my flow, okay? And I have to release myself to do the works that will help me flow towards the destiny that is already in existence for me. So I'm going to say that again. Relax your mind, breathing, taking deep breaths is a way to relax your mind. Receive it, see it, see yourself at the destiny, see yourself already at the destination that you have in mind. See yourself achieving the goals, see yourself achieving the dreams. Receive that it can happen. Because when you receive, as they say, believe and receive, yes. But then you cannot doubt within your heart. Because how can you doubt within your heart, but you say you believe? Ooh. Don't get me started. Because how you going to trust, but then not trust that it can happen for you? How you can trust for everybody else, but then when it comes to you, you don't trust that it can happen for you? My bad. Let me keep going. Resist the negativity. People will be out there that's going to try to stop your flow. People will not understand your flow. Some people are going to come against you. That's the way of the world, okay? Especially if you are called for greatness. Especially if you know that you are put on this earth to do something magnificent, wonderful, great. There's going to be resistance that is going to come your way that's going to try to stop you from achieving those goals because the goals that you achieve are going to change the lives of others and you're going to achieve these things that other people never thought that you could achieve. And so why wouldn't you get resistance? Of course, resistance is going to come, but you have to be able to press past it and flow. Release yourself to do the work. And I'm just repeating because I just want to make sure we really get this before I wrap up. Because it's not just about sitting back and, and waiting for it to happen. Now you release yourself to do the work. Now that you've understood what you're going after. You do the work, but instead of fighting to get the work done, you're relaxing and you're flowing towards it because it's already there. It's already done. It's already set up for you to have. But you have to understand how to get it. So, again, this is Tracy D. Armstrong. Hopefully you can remember and recall those three pivotal P's that will help you in your destiny decision making. Have a good one, y'all.
The needle on your compass is always adjusting to find out what's exactly right for you. What's important is that you need to do your part, and that is to watch, to learn, to listen, to hear, to pay attention, and to take that advice that you get from inside to guide you in exactly the right direction. They're gonna be setbacks, disappointments, modifications, delays, sickness, deaths. There will be challenges. You will feel off center. You will get new insights, new revelations, new things that will come to you. The question is, how will you deal with it? Be still, go within, and then move accordingly. You get influenced either in large ways or in small ways, but every day something changes you. Be prepared for it, embrace it, and move forward. Remember, life is a continuous progression of changes and difficulties and ups and downs and trends, and your job is just keep moving forward. Be open to the experience. Stay connected to current reality with curiosity, and enjoy the ride. Hang on. It's not like you were moved once and then you just somehow play it out. You moved once, it set a new direction, and then the new direction is to just always be compassing. Pay attention to the opportunities that are there and trust that that's where you're supposed to be. And keep going. Don't do things that are insignificant, that are gonna waste your time. Be determined to choose things that are gonna make your life more abundant and more fulfilling. And though the values will change along the way and the destinies, the summation of all your destinies will make up your life journey. Your soul calls your life's journey. Your mind plays with the destinies. Your physical body will adjust them. You will refine them along your way. That's how you master your life. So when your compass moves you one more time, what do you do? You celebrate it. You welcome the challenge. You take a deep breath, you put a smile on your face, you look up and you go, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find out what's in me. I'm gonna go forward and accomplish this. And as I do that, I will keep growing, I'll keep stretching, I'll keep uh, daring something worthy. My favorite phrase, dare something worthy. As your compass moves you, go with the flow. That's your divine mission. Gratitude is one of the most important emotions that we can hold in our life because it recognizes that we are living in harmony with the universe and accepting what the universe has to offer. And in this way, the universe provides us more of the same. Gratitude is essential because gratitude is synonymous with appreciation. What is appreciation? Appreciation is simply increasing in value. For example, your house, when it appreciates, what's it doing? It increases in value. So when you appreciate something, you are automatically increasing its value. If you don't have gratitude for something, it might as well not exist. Somebody who isn't grateful for all the blessings that they have right now is not aware of how lucky he or she is. And so when you take the time, when you take just a few moments to think about one little thing that you're grateful for, a flower, being able to breathe, being alive, that is magic in itself. And that is really the beauty of creation. That's the beauty of our lives. It was Henry James who said that nothing of the senses can satisfy the soul. The only thing that can satisfy the soul is thank you, I love you. When you get up in the morning and you can say thank you, I love you in front of the mirror, and also to the world around you and the people around you. Now, you're gonna have fulfillment. I think we take for granted um, all of our life's gifts and being grateful is a launching pad to have more and to be more and to accomplish more in your life. Gratitude is actually the grace of life. The more gratitude you have, the fuller your life will be.
So we must wake up each and every day with a sense of gratitude, with a thanksgiving, not just for Thanksgiving during the holiday, but a sense of thanksgiving throughout our entire lives. It should be a part of our lifestyle because we have so much to be thankful for. It's not just a palliative that you brainwash yourself with in order to get through troubled times. It's the, it's sort of like the sign that, wow, you're finally experiencing reality clearly. Gratitude is appreciation. It's love expressed. It feels good to the one who's feeling grateful and it's beneficial to those who are mm, in receipt of it. I remember hearing all about gratitude and I sat in my room and I was in a dumpy little place and I think I had a car that broke down a lot and I was struggling to pay my rent, which was probably $200 a month. And I was very unhappy, but I was trying, I was trying, I was trying, probably just like you. And I remember picking up a pencil, a simple number two lead pencil. And I thought, okay, let me try to be grateful for this. And I was resistant to the whole idea. And I looked at it and I said, yeah, okay, with this pointed end here, I guess I can write a grocery list. I can write a, a romance letter. I can write a novel. I can write a suicide note. There's all kinds of things I can do. And I started to shift a little bit. I thought, well, that's kind of amazing that this little piece of wood with this little piece of lead, I can actually do things that would change my life. I can write affirmations with it. I can write intentions with it. I can write out my vision with it. I can write out all kinds of things. And then the other end, if I didn't like what I wrote, I can erase it. And you notice I'm smiling now as I think about it because I'm remembering the first time I actually did this, I began to feel genuinely grateful for the pencil, for the pencil. And as I felt grateful for the pencil, I would look around my room and I'd go, there are people that don't have this. Not only a pencil, but they don't have a roof over their head. They don't have a little refrigerator. They don't have a car. They don't have any money. The way I was living, even then, with all of my complaints, all of my struggles, was better than many people in third world countries. And often I was living better than kings and queens that were ruling countries in past times. And as I realized all of that, I changed. Now today I have this wonderful lifestyle. I have a car collection and I have all these books out and I have a country estate and I have a hot tub. And every night I get in that hot tub and I look at the stars and I count my blessings. I say thank you because I'm grateful. But it all began with a pencil. <laughs> oh, it, listen, uh, welcome to Girl Power, okay? That's not the name of the event, but Girl Power, welcome, okay? Decisions that shape destiny, welcome. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you've been here, welcome, okay? You, you've heard these two powerhouses that have come up, okay? And, and then we, we see this message about gratitude. My pastor says all the time, if you can think, you can think. Even if you're in the worst time of your life, you had the worst moment of your life today, you've got something to be grateful for. Why? Because if you had that worst if, it, if you saw that this was the worst time of your life, that means you're living, okay? You're alive, you can do this, which means you have time to turn it around. Be grateful, things will change. If you genuinely be grateful, things will change. So have that gratitude. If you can think, you can think. You've got something to be grateful for. All right. Uh, it, that organ almost took me out. I was, listen, I felt like running too. <laughs> yeah, Tony, <Antonio> is crazy. <laughs> but I am grateful for that organ music, okay? Because Deanna killed it. She was, she was nice and gentle and kind of punched us in the gut, okay? A little bit, you know, when she was saying you that, you know, making that decision to eat that cheeseburger all the time, you, you didn't have to do that. But, Okay, it was, that was a punch in the gut. And then Tracy just came out the gate swinging, punching people in the face. Okay, both were needed. Both were needed. Power packed, ladies. Okay, now the, the, the lady closing us out. Okay, okay. I, I'm, I don't have to say much. Okay, but I'm, I'm going, I am going to. Okay, this lady coming all the way from sunny California. Okay, sunny California, where it is 8 38 p.m. over there. Okay. It, now, I will say, because she's in sunny California, she is a Golden State Warriors fan, okay? Like, she's in the Bay Area. That's, that's where she is, okay? And I think if she likes football, she loves the San Francisco 49ers. It's okay, okay? I love, I'm a fan of football. I just, I got to mess with it every now and then, okay? 
But seriously, she is the queen of HR, human resources, with emphasis on the human part because she has a heart for people and she strives every day to make sure people are treated like they are like the human beings they are. This lady has a heart of gold and we just love her. So right now, <laughs> coming to the stage, okay? My big sis, Miss Adonia Dixon with her keynote, three pivotal decisions that guide your life. Go ahead, big sis, you got it. No, oh, you muted. Hey, you, I'm talking to you. You don't see things as they are. You see things as you are. I often take a walk every day, five days at least at a minimum. And I walk because I like to commune with nature. I love warm weather. I love green grass. I love plants. I love the birds. I just like being outside with nature. So often, once a day, I will spend 30 minutes and I will take a walk. On this one particular day, I took a walk. Same destination, same journey. It's about 30, 35 minutes. And I'm walking and I'm looking in the sky and just enjoying the, the feel of the sun. And as I was coming around the corner, I walked past some beautiful green bushes. I happened to look down and I saw a piece of cardboard with words across on the cardboard. I continued walking and then something says, stop. I could not have seen what was written on that cardboard, but I continued walking and my soul got pulled and I stopped again. And I said, I must make a U-turn. I made a U-turn and I went back and I looked at that cardboard and these were the words on that board. I used to be somebody. Resonate with that. I used to be somebody. My heart sank because here's what I know. There was probably someone out there, homeless. That sign was something that they may have used to get attention so they can get whatever they needed for that moment, whether it was food, whether it was a dollar bill, whether it was just someone to recognize and notice them. I used to be somebody. There are three pivotal decisions that guide each one of our lives. Belief, attitude, and perspective. I want to tell you the story about Nelson Mandela, which most of us know. Nelson Mandela was from Africa. And he struggled during apartheid. One of the biggest things and most important things for him was to fight this terrible in, in, in aggressions, terrible things that they did um, to prevent people of color in particular from doing things and having things. So Nelson Mandela had a, 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 a organization and became part of an organization. And they just believed that things should be fair to all. He worked hard, very smart. He actually went to law school, very bright. But because he was bright and had opinions, his voice was meant to be squashed for him to not be able to say or talk or do anything. He was prevented because he believed to treating people fairly. I bring that up because the three Pivotal decisions that guide your life are your beliefs, your attitude, and your perspective. 
Nelson Mandela was incarcerated for 27 years. 27 years, day in and day out, he was incarcerated. Everything he did, every movement that he made was controlled. The one thing they did not realize that they could not control was his beliefs, his attitude, and his perspective. For 27 years, he was told what to do. He was told when to do it. He was told when to eat. He was told when to sleep. He survived it for 27 years. His beliefs, his attitude, and his perspective are the three decisions that guided his life. Let's define, I wanna define, just, just to give you just a general idea, so we're all on the same page here. Let's define this pivotal decision. What's, what is a pivotal decision? What does that even mean? These are, these are defining moments. They're defining moments in all of our lives where we are consciously or maybe even sometimes unconsciously where we make decisions that will profoundly shape our future. So these are decisions that are often driven by, again, our beliefs, our attitudes, our, our perceptions. They have this power over us, this power to alter the course of our journey. They impact our relationships, our opportunities, our ultimately, ultimately, when in all grand scheme of things, it's our sense of fulfillment and our success, our ability to have success. It guides us through a vast landscape of all kinds of possibilities. And it also helps determine where we stand today and where we can aspire to be tomorrow our beliefs, our attitude, and our perspective. Let's talk about the power of belief. Beliefs are this deep held, deeply, deeply, deeply held convictions. They're thoughts, they, they, they are acceptance, there are, tr are truths. They are our framework of how we are maybe see, see ourselves, how we interpret our lives. They, they influence our thoughts, our emotions, our behaviors, our decision. I wrote a book and it was things I would tell my five-year-old self. One of the things that I truly, if I knew then what I know now, is this fact. What other people think about me ain't none of my business. What others think about you ain't none of your business. And yes, I said ain't, and I said ain't for the emphasis. Because what I believe, how I interpret what I believe, and my perspective of what I believe is who I am, is what makes who I am. And I am the one that gets to decide that. There are huge consequences huge consequences for allowing someone else to control our beliefs, our perspective, our attitude. Let me talk about the impact about our attitude. So our attitudes are, they're, they're overall, they're, they're how we evaluate stuff, our feelings, our judgments about people, our objectives. It, often it's formed through combination of things. It's our beliefs, our emotions, our experiences. It reminds me of a time when I had, I was in a relationship for quite a long time and I was with a gentleman, good guy, good guy, very good guy. And we had a disagreement and we had a disagreement because as we women, excuse me, women, as we tend to do, if we don't have an answer, we gonna make something up. What happened on this particular day is I had not heard from him and I was expecting to get a phone call, expecting that we were going to go out and have dinner, just go spend the evening together. I didn't get a phone call. So it was one or two or three things that must have happened because my perspective and how I chose to interpret what took place must be right. Either, oh my goodness, he was in an accident, something happened to him, 
or he was with another woman. Guess where I landed? Guess where I decided must have been the case? Yep, he had been with another woman. I was furious. I was fuming. I was angry. I was upset. I made up so many stories about what happened. I could, I could tell you what she looked like, what she was wearing, where they was, what he said to her when he got her attention. I had a story that could have been in movies, could have been in Hollywood, could have been Hollywood. That didn't happen. In the grand scheme of things, when it was all said and done, nope, he wasn't in an accident. Guess what? He just didn't call. He just didn't call. We didn't have a definitive time. We didn't have a definitive plans. We didn't have a definitive date. We just, it was an assumption up uh, my perspective, up uh, my beliefs, and up uh, my attitude that took me down this rabbit hole of anger, frustration. I was furious. I, I had this story all made up. I knew what he was doing. I knew where he was perspective, attitude, and my belief. Here's the thing. My life, no, let's change that. Your life, your life is a result of the choices you make. If you don't like your life, guess what? It's time to start making better choices. Oops, that hurt a little bit. But it's a fact. It's time that you make better choices. See, here's the thing. It's our attitude at the beginning of anything, any task, any task. Think about a task that you have to do. Something that, that because it, again, it brings me back to these stories that I tell myself. I've always been taught or told by others. I was teased a lot as a kid. Let me just stay there for a minute. I was teased a lot as a kid. Awkward, you know, had a short afro. I looked like a little boy probably most of the time. Um, I, I thought I looked like a girl, but, you know, if you, you didn't have long, pretty hair and all the other things that happen and in, in, in what people call beautiful, um, I didn't make the grade. Let's just say that. I didn't make the grade. I didn't make the grade. And so what I found myself doing is getting in trouble and getting in trouble because I thought things made me beautiful. I would get into my sister's clothes closet. I would get into my mother's closet. I would get in people's shoes, you name it. I would do anything I can to look better in my eyes. So other people would think I was better or cute or smart enough. None of it worked. None of it worked. It got so bad that there was a time in my life where, and this, I'm Miss Goody Two Shoes. I follow the rules, but there was a time when for a week I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't go to school, but I could not, my goodness, I couldn't tell my mother that. How could I? I couldn't tell my mother that because I was a good girl. I follow the rules. I, I, I was compliant. I was, I was a good girl, but this good girl so believed she was not good enough that for a week I didn't go to school. What I chose to do is act like it. I would get dressed, I would eat breakfast, I would grab my school bag, I would grab whatever I had, my keys. We were latchkey kids back in the day, that's what we call it. When you had your key, parents went home, you had a key to be able to get in the house, you got in the house, you called and said, I made it home safely, latchkey kid. I, I would look the part like I was going to school. I would leave, I would hide behind this big old pine tree that we had in our yard, huge pine tree that we had in our yard. Wait until the bus drove past, wait a little bit longer till my mother get in the car and she'd leave and I went back in the house. I would stay there, watch TV, play whatever I played, then when it was time for me to come home, I would go back outside, walk around the block as if I was coming from home, and then I went into the house. I did that for a week because every day it seemed like someone was telling me I was stupid. I thought I was too cute. 
all, and it was interesting because it, it appeared to me that the women of color, the black people, okay, I'll just say it, they were the worst. You think you cute. You think you smart. You blah, 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 blah. And that's all I heard is blah, 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 blah. I believed every word they every word if they spit out at me, I believed everything they said. I was a believer. My attitude became complacent. My attitude became sad. I was depressed. My mother put me in some counseling because they was worried about me. I believed everything. They told me. I believed. What do you believe? Where's your perspective? Where do we even get perspective from? So perception. So I'm, I'm going to go back to perception just a little bit because we don't see things as they are. We actually see them again as we are. As we are. Our perspective. Our, our perception, again, it's very important. It's shaped by all these experiences and beliefs. I'm the one that tells my story. I'm the one that makes up and defines how difficult things are. I am the one. You are the one, not someone else. There's a point in our lives that we need to do some personal reflection. You want to have some introspection. You want to ask questions as Miss Tracy on her when she did her wonderful speech. You want to ask questions, is this real? Is this is really what I believe or is this someone else's belief? And if I do believe that, where did it come from? Why do I believe it? Who says, what's the facts? Where's the proof? Where's the documentation? Where, 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 where is it coming from? It's majorly important to realize you are your best friend and your worst enemy. You are your best friend and your worst enemy. So if you are your best friend and, and you were talking to a, another best friend, what would you tell that person if they said they weren't good enough? What would you do and say and be to that person if they felt bad, if they felt cheated on, if they felt not good enough? What would you say to them? Because whatever you would say to them is the same thing you should be saying to yourself. To yourself. It's all about choices. Three pivotal decisions. Your beliefs, your attitude, and your perspective. You are the driver of your destiny. You're in the driver's seat. You just need to know how to read your map. Where are you going? We all have GPS nowadays. We have all kinds of technology. It tells us where we're going, but it doesn't tell us where to go. There's a difference. Did you did you did you see how I slipped that in there? You tell it where you're going by giving it instructions and then it will get you to your destination otherwise you're just going to be following the flow following the flow and you're going nowhere fast because you have made no choice and making no choice is a choice you have let others decide and others who decide are deciding for you inappropriately in most cases, because you've surrendered your power. We are not victims. You do not have to be a victim. I used to believe my perspective, my belief, my attitude that I was a victim. Poor me was my middle name. It's someone else's fault was my accusation. I have no control was my belief. I'm not good enough. Again, another belief. All of which, from my perspective, I could have changed by just turning the page. Each one of us are like a book. Each one of us can turn the page at any given moment 
and change the direction of our future. Find hope in the smallest seed, as they say, the mustard seed. Each one of us has the ability to control only what we can control. Our three pivotal decisions, our beliefs, our attitude, and our perspective. What are you thinking? Is it hard today? Was it too difficult? I had an attitude actually uh, today and, and I was able to, the, here's the beautiful thing. I, I'm able now as I'm aging, as I get older and, I, and I, I'm and more comfortable in my skin. I don't care what you think of me. It would be nice if you it, appreciate, if you, if you care, but my life does not, doesn't falter if you don't. That is a place that I'm so proud to be. I'm, I earned it. I worked really hard to get there. It is not easy, but it's easy. Because once you're there, you're like, what was I tripping for? What? Why? 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 I ask myself why a lot. You know, because if I'm feeling some kind of way, one of the best things you can do is ask yourself, okay, what's, what's, real, what's really going on? You know, what, what story did I tell myself? What memory am I bringing back that happened 455 years ago? And I'm still talking about it today. What? Because we all, we all have a tendency to have that little dark spot or that little dark place or that poor me, you know, that poor me, oh, poor me, poor me, poor me. I have a tendency every now and, and here's the beautiful thing of it. I like me so much. I talk to me now. I actually talk to me. I enjoy talking to me because when I act up, I'd be saying, mm, you acting up again. I actually talk to myself and I listen to myself and I can coach myself out of my crazy. That is one of the, be <laughs> I think that I, that's a joy for me. I absolutely love it because I can say you have lost your mind. You need to get it together. Snap back. And in instant, I can walk myself out of it. I want to go back to this walk that I went on, this person that wrote on this cardboard box, I used to be somebody. Is that you? Is there anyone out there that feels that, that thinks that, that was that, that is that? that you used to be somebody? Because if that is you, I'm here to tell you, it's not you. You are breathing, you're living, you're standing. If you can see, you're seeing. You, as long as you're here on this earth, in this place we call this crazy world, you are somebody. You will always be somebody. But the best somebody you can be is hinged upon, guess what? Those three things. Your belief, your attitude, your perspective. I challenge you. What do you believe? Do you believe the world is difficult? Do you believe it's hard for you? Do you believe only you, you're the only one that can't have something that you want? Do you believe, do you believe, do you believe, do you believe? Do you believe but you really don't believe? Do you like the word saying you believe, but you don't believe? Do you even know what believe means? Do you know where belief comes from? Stop for a minute. Feel your feelings. Acknowledge that you have them. And then say, what one thing can I do to change this narrative? To stand up. It just might mean to stand up. It just might mean to walk outside. It just might mean to pick up a color crayon and a color book and start coloring. Be a kid again. Go back to when you had a good day and repeat having that good day. Go back and do something for somebody else. Let me tell you, the best thing you can do when you are in pain and you're in poverty and you're feeling the way you feel is go do something for somebody else. Go do something for somebody else. Go open a door. Go help somebody across the street. Go put help a, a, a senior put groceries in their trunk of their car. 
drive somebody, offer to take somebody to their doctor's appointment. Do something for somebody else. That is the best thing you can do and the most selfish thing you can do. And why do I say selfish? Because the benefit is yours. You did something for somebody else, but you get the benefit of it. You get that feeling of joy. You get that feeling of importance. You get that feeling of goodness. You get that feeling of love. You get that feeling. You get the benefit. Go do something for somebody else. Mow somebody's lawn, rake the leaves, get their groceries, get the newspaper, walk their dog. Simple. Simple. You don't have to have brain science. You don't have to have a degree. You don't go do something for somebody else. It is your beliefs, your attitude, and your perspective that will determine your progress, your prosperity. I love those P's and I just kind of stole those P's from uh, Miss Tracy. But at the grand scheme of things, you get to decide. It's all about your beliefs, your attitude, your perspective. So I say again, your life, and this is your life. It's not your mama's, not your daddy's, not your sister's, not your cousin's, not your friends. You don't compare. You don't compare. You don't compare. But your life, again, is the result of the choices you make. What choices are you making? If you don't like your life, it is time to start making better choices. And if you don't know what that looks like, ask for help. Find somebody that you believe makes better choices. Talk to them. Call mentorship. Talk to them. You have control of your destiny. It's all tied to the decisions. And all three of those decisions will guide your life your attitude, your beliefs, your perspective. I'm going to end this conversation by asking you, what do you believe? What's holding you back? What perspective do you have that's potentially negative, that's causing you the angst, the pain, the frustration, the anger? Are you mad at someone, forgive them. Don't forgive them for them. Forgive them for you. Why are you holding on to that? Your perspective. And yeah, you're probably thinking, you don't understand. You don't know how hard it hurt. You don't know how bad it was. No, I don't. You're right. But what I do know, it's your beliefs, your attitude, and your perspective that is holding you hostage. And if you want to be free, and if you want to be happy, and before I moved past happy, let me let me stop at happy for a minute. Because here's my belief, right or wrong, my belief. Happiness to me is a is a is a moment in time. It comes and goes, it's up and down, it ebbs and flows. I look for contentment. I am content. I am in the best time of my skin right now. I'm content. I just am. I, 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 I go, some days are better than others. I have ups and downs like everybody else. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm content. I'm content. I appreciate. I'm grateful. I'm breathing. I'm alive. I, I'm content. Every so often, I'm pretty gut dong happy. But I don't seek happiness because, again, to me, it's fleeting. It comes and it goes. It ebbs and it flows. It's ups and it down. I'm content. That means I know some days are better than others. That means I am happier than other days. It also means that I'm still here, I'm still alive, and I'm in a good place mentally, physically, and emotionally because my beliefs and my attitudes and my perspective determine my destiny. What's your destiny? Where are you going? What road are you going to take? I challenge each and every one of you Every day, be intentional, make good choices. If you're having a bad day, check your attitude. 
and your perspective. And I bet you, you'll find contentment as well. Thank you for staying here with me. And thank you for listening. We find ourselves having the same New Year's resolution year in and year out. And that is because until you get a new you, you will never have a new year. I'll repeat that. Until you get a new you, you will never have a new year. So I encourage people to get in tune with themselves and to find a way to get to that great self that they know is buried down deep inside of them. And it takes time. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. The reality is we live in a society where we are standing in front of the microwave patting our feet and we want everything like yesterday. But success is a process. So be patient and know that your time will come. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? That's when you use your compass. That's when you trust that your compass is there to guide you and you go for it. It is extremely powerful to set your own compass, be true to your own highest values, be clear on your own inspirations and vision, and follow the path with a machete and create a completely new trail that's true to you. Keep this in mind. For every moment you spend focusing outside of yourself, trying to find an answer, you're sacrificing one minute that you could be looking inside yourself where the answer has been there all along. Imagine you're going down a two-lane road. You have speed bumps on both sides that tell you when you're going out of your lane. As long as you stay in your lane, all is well. You're following your path. When you hit one of the bumps on the right or on the left, all it is is a little jolt. It's waking you up to say, oh, get back in your lane. Stay on your path. Follow your compass. It's not thinking about the ideas. It's not becoming aware of the ideas. The most important part of our life is actually putting the ideas into play and using them to run our lives. That makes all the difference in the world. How many opportunities are you missing that are right there, right in your backyard, that you're not acting upon? Listen to your intuition, what is called the still inner voice, that little voice that will always guide you to do the right thing for you. Never go against your intuition. When you listen to your intuition, when you listen to your heart, there's some great power in the universe that will guide you unerringly to doing the right things and being the right person in the right place for you. Confronted by a challenge and you feel you're literally hanging from a cliff, instead of focusing on the fall, it might be wiser to focusing on how it strengthened your hands. It's making you determine what you really want in life, your goal and maybe giving you an opportunity to show that you can conquer any obstacle and actually go from the cliff hanging to rising above the cliff and getting to the peak. Life is alive, and when you get into the flow of the movement, it'll feel like you come to life. It'll feel like you come to life once again. So remember, every time the sun touches your face, you can understand and know that you are special. As long as we're moving in the direction of our goals and our dreams and we hold on to our vision, we will achieve every single goal and you will achieve every single goal that you have.
The sun rises over a new world. We still hurt sometimes. We still cry sometimes. But we carry on. We feel. We see. We talk. We live. I am strong. I am confident. I am here. I am ready. When the end comes for you, let it find you conquering a new mountain not sliding down an old one. Many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65. Your life has value. Decide with the compass of your life that you're going to make a mark, that you're going to live your life in such a way that long after you're gone, buried in your grave, the impact of your life will continue to show up long after you're gone. Mm. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Girl power. <laughs> Girl power right now. My goodness, my goodness. I'm going to sound like a Baptist preacher. I ain't going to hold you long. However, <laughs> I want to thank these three powerful ladies who spoke on this evening, Decisions That Shape Destiny. I hope that each one of us take at least one point that they have said from each of their keynotes. I hope you take at least one point and hold it dear to you and apply it to your life. Okay. Deanna Marie started us off. Okay. <laughs> then we had the power back with Tracy D. Armstrong and the incomparable. Whew, okay. <laughs> Delia Dixon. Okay. My goodness, powerful, powerful. Uh, my goodness. Uh, oof. Okay, listen. <laughs> Take something to heart that each one of these young ladies have said. Please apply it to your life. Don't just leave here and say, wow, man, that was good. No. <laughs> yes, it was good. But also, apply something that they have said because i know something has resonated with each and every one of us so whatever that is you take it and you run with it okay also if you like what you heard tonight you better be in the place march 17th through the 22nd for one to con i'm telling you you know why because these three ladies are speaking again okay along with some other power pack uh speakers that we have but these three ladies are going to be there again, and you have the opportunity to hear from them again. So if you love what you heard tonight, you be sure whether you want to come in person to Houston, Texas, or if you want to be virtual, as long as you're there, okay? Because I guarantee you, Antonio, if you come virtually, Antonio is going to make sure you feel like you are there physically. Mm -hmm. So do not miss that, okay? Wow, I mean... I, yeah. <laughs> just, just, thank you all again for joining us. Just man, wow. I I have no words. And I'll re preach sermons. Okay. We had three good ones. So <laughs> everyone have a wonderful evening. You can plant better, you can dominate, and we will see you at the top, not from the top.